Rory, thank you so much for making the time to talk to us today. Um, you know, watching these desperate, chaotic scenes from Afghanistan over the last few days has been just heart wrenching. Uh, they immediately call to mind your film for American experience, Last Days in Vietnam. These images on the news feel like mirror images. Were you immediately struck by these images as well? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think that there's a real connection and analogy to what happened in 1975 in Vietnam and what we're seeing right now in in the streets of Kabul and, and throughout Afghanistan. Um, it's heartbreaking to see. Um, you know, I think that Particularly, the 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 people on the ground there in Afghanistan have been through so much already in their lives, and and they really don't deserve this. You know, the the extremely powerful tagline of your film was "Who goes and who gets left behind." Um, even saying it now kind of gives you goosebumps because you so powerfully showed these American service. Um, men on the ground in Vietnam who were forced to ask and answer that question. Can you talk a little bit about how they processed um, being put in that position? And then also, who were the Vietnamese men, women, and children who were trying to escape? Yeah. Well, you know, it is, and there are just so many parallels, right, from what happened um, in 1975 in Vietnam and um, the, this question of, of who goes and who gets left behind is as pressing today as it was in that moment. You know, as of Sunday, when when the uh, government, our government there fell um, and the Taliban took over, we had 15,000 Americans on the ground there who um, pretty much all of whom need to get out. My understanding is that the, the US government has assessed in terms of the Afghans who helped us during the war and including their families, because people are not gonna leave without their families. There's an additional 50 to 60,000 Afghans who are in need of evacuation. Um, that's a lot of people. And we're clearly just by looking at the images and understanding what's happening on the ground there are ill-equipped to get all of those folks out of Afghanistan. We're seeing. I mean, the parallels of what we saw in Da Nang be, be, before Saigon fell, month before Saigon fell with the, with the airplane going down the runway, um, people desperate to get on that airplane and then seeing the, the exact same image coming out of Afghanistan. Um, people, you know, reaching over the walls here in Afghanistan trying to get into the airport to try to get out. And what we saw with people reaching over the walls, I mean, there was an image yesterday I saw of a, a man handing his baby to an American military personnel to, to get the baby out, you know? And then of course the family's left behind, but they'll take my baby, you know, at least. I mean, it's so heart wrenching to imagine what it takes to get to that choice for a family member to just hand their baby over to military personnel feeling like they're gonna have a better chance at survival and a life if they get over this wall. Um, so, you know, it's it, 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 my heart goes out to the people on the streets there and in the towns and in the villages and who have given so much to this vision that the Americans had to the promises that we made, that we brought to this country. Um, and just, I mean, it's beyond disappointment. It's, it's a tragedy that we see playing itself out right now. You know, I always felt that really the lesson of, of, of those final days of the war was not about so much about how those days were handled, although that is a very important and very relevant question. But it really goes back to the beginning of these wars. And it's so important to ask the question when we start a war, how are we going to get out? What's our end game? What's our strategy here? Once we get to this point, it's very hard to kind of 
have a good solution. And, you know, Biden makes some good points, which is that there's just no good way to exit this war. There may have been a better way than what we've done, but there's no good way to do it. So, you know, I think we really have to um, be disciplined before we enter these kinds of conflicts and engagements and wars to, to really understand what is our exit strategy. And, and you're, you're, you're saying this, but, but basically what, we've, what we saw in your film, what we're seeing in the scenes this week, all over the news and all over our digital feeds, this is, this is policy versus the on the ground reality, live and, and in living color. And I think that one of the things that, that you did so beautifully in your film was give voice to the actual people, the, the men and women who were, who found themselves in this situation. Well, you know, and the, I mean, today I was just reading this morning about how the, the Taliban has now come in and taken over a lot of the military equipment that we had on the ground there. Um, you know, uh, I don't have the numbers on the top of my head, but it's, you know, it's thousands of elements, I think 2000 ground elements and then, you know, aircraft as well. And um, and this military equipment, which is U.S. military equipment, is now going to fall in the hands of the Taliban. And and who knows where it goes and, and how it's then used. Is it used only in the country or is it then taken out of the country? Is it used in terrorist acts against Americans? So, you know, and that was the storyline that we also pursued in Last Days in Vietnam. Um, Richard Armitage and Kim Do who was his Vietnamese counterpart, the story of, of those two heroes going, um, Armitage returning to Vietnam, basically to secure US military equipment, to the, the, particularly the, our ships. Um, and, and you know in that effort, those two men saved 30,000 Vietnamese, you know, with just the two of them. Um, so, you know, there, there are extraordinary stories that come out of these events, but putting people in these situations where they're having to make these very difficult life and death choices um, and, and, and do them really on the fly um, and without a kind of methodical evacuation plan that's in place that really protects not only the Americans, but all of the people who risk their lives to, to work with the Americans. Um, who we are now, you know, in a position of potentially abandoning. I hope, I hope, and I pray that that's not the case, and that we look out for not only the people who helped us, but also their families. But I am very concerned that there's um, not going to be that sense of of uh, priority and um, ensuring that that all of those Afghans who you know have been so wonderful to us that that we are not going to protect them in the way that I think we should. My last question for you, Rory. Um, when you made your film, you had the benefit of 40 years of hindsight and, and perspective. Uh, when you watch these scenes, do you, how long do you think uh, it'll take for us to have that same kind of perspective on Afghanistan? And also, do you think you could have made your film and had the same impact without that benefit of time? Well, listen, we have the benefit of time right now, right? And we are still making the same mistakes. So um, I think it's important for our leaders to understand history so that we don't get into these predicaments um, again and again and again and again, right? I mean, there's, it's there, it's there for the taking. We can learn from this, we can learn from our mistakes and we can become better moving forward and we can become more strategic and more thoughtful. Um, but we have to study, we have to delve into these moments in history and, and learn from our mistakes. This is a great opportunity to do that. So, you know, if not now, when? 
Rory, thank you so much for making the time to speak to us today. Uh, I just want everyone to know that Last Days in Vietnam is available to stream on PBS's documentary channel on Amazon, as well as iTunes and all the other platforms. I hope people will revisit your film and take those lessons and reflect, as you said. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great talking to you.